Welcome to our YouTube show, which is yours and mine. This is your prophetic journey with me, your host, Sean Bowles. And I'm excited about this because we get to process the prophetic together. A lot of people talk about words or show words, but they don't talk about the behind the scenes process of following God in these crazy exploits he sends us on and just the risk taking, the faith building, the trial and errors, yes, the errors. And so I'm gonna be talking to you every week and also I'm gonna be including some of my friends via Skype and FaceTime, as well as we're gonna be doing some really fun dissecting of prophetic words I've given in the past and also other words that are on the internet, just to kind of talk about these together, process them together. And I'm hoping you'll love this journey, you'll share with your friends, You'll get excited to see it every week. And I hope that you'll join the conversation, become part of the family and leave comments and just talk about your own experience in the exact same ways. Because when we go on the journey together, we support and supplement each other's faith. So with that being said, this is your prophetic journey with Sean Bowles. And I want to start it out by one of the most epic and scary moments of my life. I went to an event called The Send. Some of you know The Send. It was with Lou Engel, who's the director of The Call, who transitioned that organization to release the largest evangelism event in our modern history, which was releasing evangelists into every field. So we had YWAM president, Daniel Kalinde, Michael Koulianos, and Todd White. We had all these guys come together, there's so many more. And at the very end of the whole day, it was like a 10 hour or 12 hour day. At the very end of the whole day, they had a section where we're gonna pray for healing and we're gonna prophesy or pray for the prophetic for the whole crowd, both online, the people who are watching via television or online or also the people who were there. And so they had asked me to do the prophetic part and it was a little nerve wracking because I didn't have anything going into the event. I prayed a lot. I was excited to be a part of the event. And then I realized halfway through, I have zero. Like still, I just have a few impressions I write on my notepad all the time. But I went back uh, in the middle of the day, I went back to just, it was a very hot day and I went back to take a shower, just kind of reset during one of the worship sets, knowing I can get back and forth very quickly. So when I went back, uh, got into my hotel room, took a shower and I was listening to Francis Chan live because he was there at the center, it was so deep. I love what he was saying because it was really connected to just oneness and intimacy with Jesus and connection to like outside of performance. And all performances kind of fell off me and I just began to pray for people and began to write notes, which are right here. Um, began to write notes for, I probably wrote notes for about seven or eight different types of people that would be there or specific people would be there, but I didn't know what I was gonna take jumps on once I get there because it's a word of knowledge process. For me, I like to pray into it in advance. I don't always do this, but um, if I know there's a meeting coming up, I pray for specific words, prophecies, words of knowledge, words of wisdom. And I just write down notes. And sometimes these become more and more specific. Some of these are super vague. It's just like, I feel like someone might've had a dream about a tree, you know, that, that specifically or, or that generically. But then other times it's really specific. And this particular time I had a number of specific things that I was praying and I came back to the event and uh, I started out and I'm gonna show you guys the video in a second. But I started out with, uh, I asked if there's a dentist who was from the Ukraine or was from Washington. Those two areas were what I saw highlighted. And out of a crowd of 70,000, I was like, there's probably gonna be someone, maybe not, maybe that's not specific enough, I don't know. Maybe there's gonna be five of them, maybe there's not gonna be any of them. And luckily, because Jesus ordained this moment, there was a dentist and it was great. So watch the video and then I'll come back and we'll, we'll talk to you about my process. You help me, so I'm gonna give a couple, what I call Holy Spirit nudges or indicators. And then you, if it's you, you're gonna have to wave, no one else wave. And then if it's really you, everybody else has to start pointing and we're gonna see it on the camera. And I'm looking for a dentist who you're either from the Ukraine or your parents were, and you moved to America. And I think to Washington State or Washington DC, there's a dentist who your parents were from the Ukraine. You moved into America. Help me out here, is there a dentist? We've only done this in stadiums this big a few times. So it's a little hard. We have somebody. We have, thank God. Thank you, Dennis, for listening to God and showing up. Is there a screen I can see or I can't even see a screen, I guess. Here, let me walk way out here and almost fall off the stage, this is good. Dennis, you're here. Good, I can see a little bit. Dennis, the Lord, the Lord himself has been walking with you since you were a little boy. And you had a hard time there in the middle because of some of the things that happened in your family but it's gonna give you the power over divorce and broken families and adoption and foster care. And the Lord is saying, he's raising you up, that there's something you're called to build of an awakening movement, an awakening movement, something on the East Coast. I think you're on the West Coast, but you're gonna be on the East Coast. Apparently it's happening on the East Coast. And I just see like, um, 
um, Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania. And God is saying he's awakening something in Pennsylvania and he's calling you to lead a movement, a movement. My Dennis, there you are. And Dennis, I'll tell you this, I have to face you and face you two ways. I don't know how to do this. But I'm telling you, your, your, your heritage in Eastern Europe, God is gonna send you not only to America, but he's gonna send you to North America. He's gonna send you to South America, but he's gonna commission you, not just send you, but commission you over the Ukraine and Eastern Europe. And something's gonna happen like you can't even dream of. He's putting you right now on the highest lampstand that you can shine from. And it's your time, brother, it's your time. Wow. Dennis, wasn't that awesome? I love this face. Ah, you know, it just, it was priceless. What happened in his heart, what happened in his life was priceless. It was really hard for me because I felt um, it was such an obscure word. It wasn't like the times I've taken a jump where I was in full faith and I knew I had something. I just had very simple pieces of information. And here's uh, a copy of my notes. So this is how I usually do it on iPad and I make notes. And so here's like, we have Dennis, Ukraine, my family's from Spokane, Washington. My parents are from Everett and Spokane, um, Pennsylvania, Nicaragua, which is spelled wrong, I'm sure. Um, those are the first impressions I got. Then I thought he had a bit, I don't think I said this though. I didn't say this. Visitation is youth about filling his belly with power. I should talk to him about that because I've actually talked to him since. But I felt like he had a visitation is youth about his filling. Like he felt the power of God go inside of him. And then God showed him this power, how it worked on the mission field. I felt like he took a mission strip maybe. And that these things got stronger after the fact. I put, wrote it down, but I was like, I don't even know. So um, I wrote down a couple of things. I erased a couple of things because they were too personal because I just wrote some things that could be true. But one of the things I normally wouldn't call somebody out in the middle of like an event like The Send where I talk about divorce or like anything negative about them. But I felt like it was powerful because it already, he'd already had healing from it. The family had already moved on. But child of divorce affected in a huge way. He's going to get redemption and heal families and orphans. His calling is for revival in the family mountain. So he's been hidden, but he's going to be seen. So here's kind of notes that I have my other notes for other people there. But, um, <clears throat> so these are the kind of notes I, I wrote down. Now I prophesied kind of way outside of these notes. And as a matter of fact, it's really interesting because I haven't talked to him about like the power in his belly or the mission field or Nicaragua or because I didn't, I didn't feel to take the jump off of that information. And then new information came when I was prophesying to him as well, as you saw. And I feel like, you know, like part of what I was seeing is that he maybe as a young man, cause he saw some Revival, I don't know what, I, I haven't talked to him that much as far as his background, but I feel like he was probably in ministry young or did a lot of ministry stuff young that he thought it was going to be like a Todd White or someone like that, you know, or Randy Clark or whoever, but that he's actually called to the families, orphans, restoring people's lives, helping to see communities healed. And so not that those guys are not, but I just feel like God's refocused it. And then, so when we finally got to talk, it was really cool because uh, I ended up getting a call and someone sent me his phone number, which is really cool. And we talked for a while and he told me that he'd been on this really hidden journey for the last couple of years, which I wrote this. I didn't say it in the, the auditorium, but I put hidden, but will be seen. Um, he's been on a really hidden journey. He's been staying with this, this couple named Mike and Dina. He didn't go into great detail, but he'd been there for a couple of years and he had left more of like, I guess he was going to do more um, public ministry in Europe and stuff. And, um, and I talked about Eastern Europe in the prophetic word. He was going to do more which I didn't have in my notes, but it came up. He was going to do more public ministry. And then he felt like the Lord was taking him to a season of just identity and depth. And so he went to Mike and Dina's. Now Mike and Dina live in China and they've taken all these disabled children who nobody wanted. So they were orphans or kids that were being abandoned or kids that their parents didn't want anymore because they had severe, severe difficulties. And Mike and Dina have been taking care of them with very few team members. And, and Dennis, I, I believe has been there for now a couple of years. And he came back from that to go to this event and it was really profound to hear just from his heart as far as he never expected God to call him out. He's been off the radar, off of social media, off the grid for a while. And the fact that God chose him out of, as the first word of, you know, 70,000 people who are alive there. That's why you see the impact in his face because he's so impacted by the fact that God cares for him and knows him so intimately and detailed. And for me, it was so profound because out of everybody that God picked, it was like this, this person who's so deserving, you know, like so beautiful, his heart serving, you know, these kids who've been abandoned by their families with, his, with Mike and Dina. And he could have done so many other things if he chose to a low road, which I think is why God gave him such a high word, you know, it's such a promotional word. So that was fine. Well, here's Dennis's response. I want you to hear from Dennis because I loved his response that he posted online. 
Hey everyone, my name is Dennis. Uh, some of you might know me, some of you might not. I just want to post this video. I want to let people know that what happened in Orlando was so in profound and impactful because I flew in all the way from the other side of the world for this event because I heard in my heart I'm supposed to do this. And I'm sitting there on the last final day and this happens to me. And I'm looking for a dentist who you're either from the Ukraine or your parents were and you moved to America and I think to Washington State or Washington DC. Help me out here, is there a Dennis? We have somebody. We have, thank God. Dennis, the Lord, the Lord himself has been walking with you since you were a little boy. And you had a hard time there in the middle because of some of the things that happened in your family. But it's gonna give you the power over divorce and broken families and adoption and foster care. My family does come from the Ukraine. My parents immigrated to the U.S. They met in the U.S., got married, and I was born in Washington State. Um, when we moved again to the East Coast, my parents during that time went through a really ugly divorce. And the Lord is saying, He's raising you up, that there's something you're called to build of an awakening movement, an awakening movement, something on the East Coast. I think you're on the West Coast, but you're gonna be on the East Coast. And then afterwards, I moved back to Washington, lived there for about seven years, and then moved to Pennsylvania to do a program here. On the East Coast, and I just see like um, um, Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania, and God is saying he's awakening something in Pennsylvania, and he's calling you to lead a movement, a movement. In my heart has been burning uh, those areas that were that that Sean mentioned. I've actually done trips there, and I've been actually having a few meetings that very same day with people uh, that Sean like Sean does not know me. He does not know me. Uh, this conversation happened like a few hours right before, and then all of a sudden I get this word: Your heritage in Eastern Europe. God is going to send you not only to America but he's gonna send you to North America. He's gonna send you to South America, but he's gonna commission you, not just send you, but commission you over the Ukraine and Eastern Europe. And something's gonna happen like you can't even dream of. He's putting you right now on the highest lampstand that you can shine from. And it's your time, brother, it's your time. And it's been something that a lot of close friends of mine knew about, uh, my desire to go into those areas. And so I just want you guys to be encouraged that this is real. And one of the things that is so powerful for me is that a lot of people came to me later and they told me what happened to you was so profound to me because to them, because they realized that this is real, that this is not some staged thing and I am so excited because here's what I know that whatever was spoken over me I will not be able to do it will take a generation of people to come together to see this thing happen but I just wanted to thank you guys so much for all the love that I've been getting it's been this is I'm in a whirlwind I'm so wrecked I'm, I'm still uh, just shaking from it and I don't plan on recovering I'm so thankful so thanks guys for tuning in and you guys have a great one. You guys just got to see Dennis's response, and I love his response. I love his heart. He just you just tell he is so valuable who he is, and I'm gonna encourage you. Like you saw my no process taking, and you saw me taking this risk with information both that I didn't use that God just gave me to frame him and who he was, and also information I did use that wasn't on my notes that just came in the moment. And I love that you know standing in front of tens of thousands of people, however many people that were there, and then online audience. I didn't want to be in that that position of being in front of everybody, but I was willing to, because I believe in the prophetic impartation, I believe that God wants to awaken us in this generation where he knows us, he knows things about our lives and our choices and where we're at. And I just love what God does when he speaks because it establishes something in his will on the earth that doesn't get established without prophecy. God loves prophecy. He's chosen to use it all through the scripture and he's using it again today. So I wanna encourage you to go after your prophetic journey if you love this video, share it with your friends and subscribe to us and get notifications because when you do, you're gonna be seeing more of these videos which will come out weekly. We have a lot of other fun stuff too on our Bold Ministries channel, teaching moments and prophetic moments. If you wanna watch those, make sure to subscribe to the whole channel, not just to this channel of your perfect journey. But I'm so enjoying this show already. I'm so excited to hear from you guys. So please leave a comment and we'll see you soon.